In this uh, tutorial, we will consider the improved general method. If you have not done so, please review the tutorial on general method, which forms the basis of our discussion in this uh, tutorial on the improved general method. The improvements for the general method were suggested by Ball in 1923. It still involves a graphical approach. However, today with the use of computers, it is not manually as intensive as it was before. The suggestion by Ball was to use an arbitrary value for thermal death time, or F, at 121.1 degrees C and a Z of 10 degrees C, which as you know we call F0. So Ball suggested that we select an arbitrary value of F0 as one minute. By doing so, the procedure allows comparisons of different processes in terms of the lethality achieved. Let's look at the mathematical basis first and then we will consider an example. Recall again from another tutorial on F values that we can write FTZ divided by FT reference Z equals 10 raised to power T reference minus T over Z. Now if we take inverse of both sides of this equation, we will get FT reference Z divided by FTZ equals 1 over 10 raised to power T reference minus T divided by Z. And so we have F Z with T reference divided by F Z T equals, and if we take the quantity from the denominator to the numerator, we will have to multiply the power with a negative sign. And so we can write the right hand side as 10 raised to power T minus T reference over Z. Note that we have absorbed the negative sign by switching the terms. Now, if we consider T reference as 121.1 degree C and a Z of 10 degree C, these uh, reference values, of course, refer to Clostridium botulinum, the most important pathogen that we must consider in uh, canning. So we have F Z of 10 temperature 121.1 divided by F10 T equals 10 raised to power T minus 121.1 divided by 10. And since we are going to arbitrarily select F10 at 121.1 equals 1 minute, we can substitute that in our equation and we get 1 over FT10 equals 10 raised to power T minus 121.1 divided by 10. The quantity on the left hand side, 1 over FT10, we call lethal effect. This is the lethal effect at temperature T that is equivalent to heating at 121.1 degrees C for one minute, where the target microorganism Z value is 10 degrees C. So we can use another symbol L for the lethal effect and we can say L, the lethal effect, equals 10 raised to power T minus 121.1 divided by 10. In improved general method, we will be determining lethal effect at different temperatures. So this equation is rather important. The procedure in using the improved general method is first to obtain uh, through experiments, the temperature time data for the slowest heating point at small time increments. That time increment may be a minute or two minutes or three minutes. Then we convert temperatures into lethal effect 
L values as we saw in the previous screen. Next, we will plot L versus time. And then from that plot, we will determine the area. The area will be the total lethality that will be equivalent to heating at 121.1 degrees C when the Z value is 10 degrees C. Or in other words, it will give us the F0 value for the process. Now we will consider an example by using a spreadsheet. Here in the spreadsheet, we have the heat penetration data in uh, two columns. We have the time in column A and temperature in column B. This is a temperature recorded at the slowest heating point inside the can. Now you will notice that the temperature increases from 48 degrees C to 121 degrees C at 36 minutes. That is where the heating is stopped and then cooling begins and again the temperature decreases during the cooling period. Notice that temperature is recorded every two minutes. So our next step is to convert these temperature values to L as we saw in the previous screen. So we will enter that formula as we see here in cell C2. Notice that the formula is 10 raised to power B2 refers to the temperature minus 121.1 and then divided by 10 which is the Z value 10 degrees C. So note that this is the formula for the lethal effect as we had derived on the previous screen. When we enter the formula, we get this number, uh, which as you notice is a very small number. Uh, we will now paste that formula into all the other cells in this column, as we see here. So we have a column now for the lethal effect L you will notice that the numbers for lethal effect are very small when the temperature is low until about 100 degrees C. Beyond 100 degrees C, then you have a, a noticeable uh, lethal effect. As the temperature increases, the lethal values increase until the uh, cooling begins. And you notice that after about 36 minutes, the lethal effect again begins to decrease and then becomes again very small once the temperature goes below 100 degrees C. Note that these uh, values of L represent the lethal effect that is equivalent to heating at 121.1 degrees C for one minute. You will notice that the L value at 36 minutes when the temperature is 121 is 0 0.977. If we had determined it at 121.1 degree C, it will be 1. Now we can plot these L values against time and we uh, see the plot here in the graph. And our next step is now to determine the area under the curve. Again, we will use the spreadsheet. We will utilize a formula to determine the area under the curve. So in cell D2, we are going to enter a formula shown here in the formula bar. It is C2 plus C3. Those are the two L values from cell C2 and C3 divided by 2. In other words, we are taking the average of those two numbers times the difference between the values from cell A3 and A2. So that is our time increment, and that is two minutes. So we are multiplying the average of these two values with the time increment. And that is what we see in cell D2. And we copy this formula all the way to cell D28. That is one cell before the very last one. This is how the area under the curve is determined using this procedure. 
the next uh, step is essentially taking the sum of all these numbers in column D. We enter the formula sum of the column starting from cell D2 to D28. And that sum is 12.56. So 12.56, that is the area under the curve, represents the F0 value for the process. In the spreadsheet example, we saw how to calculate the F0 value of a process. But what if we were given an F0 value and we want to obtain the process time? The procedure involves a trial and error approach. We will carry out experimentally various heat processing tests at several process times. By process time here we refer to when the heating is stopped and cooling begins. We will then determine the F0 values for each of those tests. Let's look at an example. Here in the plot we have the L values plotted against time and as we just saw for the process that we considered in the example we had a curve that looked something like this now let's identify that as A, B, C. So for this plot, the F0 value was obtained as 12.56 minutes. If we run this test again and shut off the steam, for example, uh, for heating earlier, then we will get another lethality curve. So it will be as shown here in yellow, uh, the heating cycle will end earlier and the L values will be shown as A, D, E and the F0 value can be again calculated as 8.9 minutes. We then again repeat the test except this time we shut off the steam much earlier and we get another F0 value for A, F, G and that value is 5.9 minutes. Then we will create a plot of F0 versus process time. So as you will note that in our initial process that we saw on the spreadsheet, heating was stopped at around 36 minutes. That had given us an F0 value of 12.56. And for the other two tests, we have shorter process times and we have the corresponding F0 values. And then we will connect these points as shown by this line. So let's say that we want to find out what should be the process time if we require an F0 of 10 minutes. Then from this graph on the y-axis, we will draw a line from F0 of 10 and see where it intersects this line that we drew earlier. And from there, we find out the process time, which is 33.5 minutes. So again, we can determine the process time for a target F0 value, except that you have to conduct additional experimental trials and use the procedure as we saw here. This uh, concludes our discussion on the improved general method as I had stated before, this is the most commonly used method and you want to make sure that you have a good understanding of the various steps involved in determining lethality for a given process.